So welcome everyone. Come uh, with a very quick announcement before we get going. I'm going to share my screen right now. And here we go. Let me just, uh, that's typical. The organization doesn't work anymore. I'm showing you a map. I hope you see this map now. Um, I'm just going to wait for your comments. Do you see the map here of the, of the, yes, you do, you do. I hope you do. Yes, okay, you see it. Okay, so why am I showing you this? So um, you may have heard that there have been some maintenance going on in New Mexico skies. We apologize for that. You've been thinking, what on earth are they maintaining when there is a comment out there? How could they possibly get this so wrong? <laughs> well, there's good news here. The first good news is that the weather in New Mexico skies was absolutely catastrophic. So there was no chance of taking any, uh, you know, any comment. What we have done, and this is the major thing, is things have changed. We have been in New Mexico skies for 17 years. That's a long time. It's been one of a very good relationship uh, there with, uh, with Mike and Lynn Rice, actually. Now, unfortunately, Mike passed away a few months ago, and that changes a lot of things also for us. So we were looking out for a new partner. We needed a partner with a with with very good knowledge and a very good location, possibly not so much in, in, in the areas where we were before, but try a new location. And we came across uh, Utah Desert Remote Observatories, Craig Stocks, which whom I visited just a few months ago, and I had a very good impression. They were building this up. Uh, Craig Stocks, by the way, is a very good astrophotographer, but his background really is photography, and he's put, as a mechanical engineer, a lot of work into constructing a good observatory, and we've actually had him on the show before. So we kept quiet about this, and we were doing a lot of planning because it's very difficult to migrate eight telescopes very quickly across where we didn't even know what state these telescopes were across. So on the 9th of January, Craig and Blake and and uh, the family member from Craig actually went to Mayhill to collect the telescopes or quietly dismantle everything with, with the help, of course, of the local help of New Mexico skies. And then they went upon this long journey uh, driving driving this back. And this happened in a very short time. And there were so many unknowns here for us, because first of all, this is a very risky undertaking. That's why we were so worried about it, to, to just implement telescopes and have them online for you as members is a major challenge in a very short time. So the organization and logistics was very, very crucial here, right? A lot of questions that I don't even technical questions that I won't even go into but you can imagine what it was like so they drove this 800 miles or 1200 kilometers up there was about a 13 hour journey and in the evening on the way back they got uh, close to Gallup <laughs> that's a funny story Gallup was well, not so funny when it happens right and well Craig missed one of the potholes and one of the tires exploded, which is really a nuisance on, on top of that with their trailer that this would happen. It reminds me a little bit of Hanni when Hannibal crossed the Alps, when Hannibal crossed the Alps, right, in 200-something BC. Um, maybe not quite that undertaking, but it's, it's quite a journey that we thought would be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so when he was crossing the Alps with the elephants, with the 37 elephants, well, there we were with our eight telescopes and we hit a pot coal and that had to be fixed and they went on and we were keeping quiet all the time and hoping that our members, you wouldn't be too upset about this. So anyway, we got there and they worked around the clock to get this done and Craig has uh, put this video, I'm just going to share this with you. I'm just going to switch the music off, actually. But this is a time lapse, actually, what happened in the last day. So here, that's also the observatory that I visited. You can see how what a beautiful roll of roof they built there, right? And here they're putting up everything, all the things in a very short time. Just remember, they started on the 9th of January dismantling everything, right? And you can see... Uh, how how hard they work day and night to make this possible, right? And there you come through the door into the observatory, right? You see the roll-off roof, and there's I think that's T5 there, T68 at the back you can recognize, and then of course you see the, the plane wave, the 20-inch plane or 17-inch plane waves there, 
um, all three plane weights are T11, T19, and um, T21. That's right. Um, so yeah, and, and there's uh, T14 and T20, the refractors, you can see they're all up. So we were actually going to launch much earlier. Uh, last night was cloudy. Craig told me just a few minutes ago that the weather is very good tonight. So we're going to run tests as fast as we can so we can get it online and you can see this comet, right? You can finally see the comet. So, so we've done this with good purpose and it's really exciting, uh, this new site that uh, um, in, 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 um, in Utah, desert remote observatory because it's completely flat out there it's very unlike the other locations that we have so with that announcement thank you for your your uh, understanding that we had to do this migration and it's it's all looking very positive